This is Caitlin Blackwood. I played young Amelia Pond on Doctor Who. And you're listening to the Five Ish Fangirls Podcast. The tangents and squeak continue all the way to episode 158 of the Five Ish Fangirls Podcast. I've been writing everyone else's stories. I need to figure out what my story is. It's not here, not in this realm. Welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Five Fish Fangirls Podcast. So glad they could join us. Let's start like start off like we do every week from the virtual table and see who's joined us this week. This is Brittany in Bethlehem. This is Christy in Salt Lake City. This is Sally from Wisconsin. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello everyone. Hello. Hi. Oh, gonna put a warning out there if I seem out of it it's because I injured myself over the weekend and I'm in a lot of pain <laughs> so if you hear me saying things like ouch that's probably because I'm shifting and something has gone twin <laughs> I will try not to shift in my seat too much <laughs> long story no one wants to hear it well you guys have heard it but our listeners don't need to hear it but yeah. I'm getting well, pro- I'm getting proper medical care. I will be fine in time. That's all you all you need to know. So, uh, so we've got uh, a little bit of news, and then uh, I've got a, a nicer story to tell, and then we'll get on to other things. So let's start with convention news for part. Start kicking off the news segment with. Um, some sad news, unfortunately. Um, they have uh, announced on Facebook, the folks who run Time Eddy, um, they said that this year's convention will be their last. Um, there's a, a decent length post. You can go to Facebook and read the entire thing. Uh, short version is they just they can't commit the time and the effort that would be required to keep the convention going so after the convention this coming weekend as we're recording this time ND3 um they are kind of a i guess closing the shutters on on time eddy um i guess unless someone else wants to take take up the mantle and take up the responsibility um so it's kind of sad that was one of those conventions i was it ha- i had on my list i wanted to to go to eventually oh um, yeah me too i was like saying, hey if i i can't make it to galley well because, you know, tickets sell out in in a, a blink of an eye. Yes. I can get I can get to Time Eddie. Yeah. Because it's pretty close and reasonable. And I know people yeah. out that direction. But I, I can understand why they're they're, discon- they're they're discontinuing it. But uh, at the same time, I, I'm I'm a little sad. Yeah. I am. Uh, I am, too. Same. It was definitely, definitely one that I would have liked to have gone out and got to experience and it's it's kind of another another blow unfortunately to the midwest as far as doctor who specific conventions this is a conversation i had um, with several people yesterday i was at who north america um you know talking about you know because the the event that they had yesterday came about because time lord expo got canceled so suddenly so close to the, the convention and you know, as disappointed as I was just because, you know, I was part of the convention and, you know, meeting new people and that sort of thing. It was also, it's kind of a, it creates that void that those of us here in the Midwest, you know, the Indiana, the Ohio, the Kentucky, the Wisconsin, you know, going out to like Utah, you know, area, we don't have a doctor who specific convention. Yes, we have Chicago TARDIS, which you know, yes, geographically still works for me and for some other people, but one, it's Chicago, which I hate driving in Chicago. <laughs> Sorry, Chicago, but I, I your can't imagine. It's, awful. I mean, I've I've tried. I've I've been dri- I've driven around yeah. the L.A. area. Well, I can't yeah. imagine Chicago's any better. <laughs> yeah, Chicago's not a whole yeah. lot better. Um, and two. It's Thanksgiving weekend, which for a lot of people, it's not convenient. You know, we're the convention schedule for the most part. Most conventions take place 
spring, summer, fall. And you start get you know, we have those few conventions like Chicago happens to be the same weekend. So I would, you know, if I was a bigger Star Trek fan, then I would be forced to choose which convention to go to. It's like, which fandom do I want to give my time and money to, Doctor Who or Star Trek? You know, um, plus, you know, that's a, that's a time where, you know, it's a holiday weekend. A lot of people want, they go out of town to go visit family for Thanksgiving and they make a whole long weekend out of it. So they're not, you know, I, the one year we went to Chicago TARDIS, we went to, up to my in-laws, did Thanksgiving dinner, and then proceeded to have to leave as soon as dinner was over to get up to Chicago so that we could be at the convention Friday morning. Mm -hmm. So we had to cut short that family time. Um, so, you know, the loss of, of, you know, I don't know if Time Lord Expo will come back or not. That's yet to be seen. Um, and, you know, now with the loss of, of Time Eddie, that's, you know, it's a, uh, we're, we're kind of stuck for those of us in geographically who are Doctor Who fans. Yeah, yes, we've got Indie Pop Con and Salt Lake Comic Con and, you know, other multi-fandom cons. But if you want to go to a fandom-specific convention like you know, something Doctor Who, we're kind of stuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I mean, and I can think of locally, there's... So, like some smaller conventions that are geared toward niche things like uh in october there's there's fear con which is you know a horror thing there's mm -hmm. anime bonsai which is also in october and in february is is ltue which is life the universe and everything it's a writing convention um that you know started for for writers because there's so many there's so many fantasy sci-fi there but anyway but you know i'm more to the point i'm just thinking like Man, someone someone around here ought to be able to cobble together. I mean, not cobble together, but work on a mm -hmm. Doctor Who convention just just here in, in Salt Lake or you know, the Salt Lake area. Mm -hmm. Probably not me, because I think I would totally. It's not a, it's do a well. big commit. It's a big commitment. Even, oh yeah. Even if oh you, yeah. Even, I if can, not, even if you're not trying to do the next indie pop con or salt like comic con or something you know not something even just, really big yeah. but even something just small you know two three days at a small hotel you know like a holiday inn or something it's still mm -hmm. a lot of work and it's a lot oh, I, of, I can imagine yeah. so yeah and it's a huge monetary commitment too for whoever's organizing because a lot of times they have to front their own money or you know find financing because you, yeah. you have to pay for a lot of things up front and if it's not successful you don't make your money back you could easily you know go under or go bankrupt really yeah. quickly um, so yeah it's easy for me to sit here and go like oh yeah someone do this and then it's like mm. yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's a lot harder than it looks i mean we've got we've had several convention showrunners on the podcast and from conventions of different sizes, you know, everything from the Indie Disney meet, which is a one day free event, all the way up to Starbase Indie and, mm -hmm. you know, every, you know, things in between. And it's, it's, it's a lot of work and I do not envy the, uh, the uh, folks that, uh, I mean, even the, even the stuff I was doing for Time Lord Expo, just my little part of it as the cosplay coordinator it was a, it was a decent amount of work trying to you know come up with you know cosplay policies and the you know the entry you know the entry forms for the the contest and the rules and the all the you know it's all this stuff that goes with it you yeah. don't you don't think about that's part of it and it's just well <sighs> i mean because mm -hmm. it it's it, it I'm, I'm sad that we're losing it and I, I know, I feel like I'm, I'm talking out both sides of my mouth, but yeah. I'm just like, oh, I really yeah. wanted to go to that one yeah. someday. And that's the problem with saying, oh, someday I'll go there because someday it might never come. Yeah. Just because, and yeah, it might, might just end without you getting the chance to. So, yeah. so, you know, yeah. if there's something you want to do, get on it and do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, but those that are attending Time Eddie this weekend, 
um, enjoy, and, enjoy, yes. have fun. I know the guys will, you know, the guys from Traveling the Vortex will will be there and have a full recap um, on on Traveling the Vortex next week. So stay stay tuned to uh, your podcast feeds for that, and I'm sure they'll be posting pictures on Instagram and the social medias and all that. So we look forward yep. to uh, vicariously through them. Mm-hmm. Like we always do. Yes. <laughs> well, they live vicariously through us. So. This is true. This is true. That's street we all we all add to the cycle of stuff. Yes. So anyway, well, moving on to happier convention news and, and <laughs> staying in that part of the country, Planet Comic Con uh, has continued their uh, announcements of uh, of guests. And as I said last week, expect to see a lot of Power Rangers at conventions next year because it is a banner year for the franchise. And uh, apparently they decided they needed to complete the other half of my ship, my OTP, um, <laughs> with uh, Jason David Frank. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so now you have to go to Kansas City. I kind of have to. <laughs> I kind of maybe need to have to. That, that that that's my OTP. That's a, that's my very first ship. My very first fandom ship was Tommy and Kimberly and I my her little heart uh, uh I don't know how old I was. Thir- 12 13 year old heart was just devastated. Um, when Kimberly sent that Dear John letter to Tommy, I'm like, you, you, you broke his heart. How dare you? So, it's uh, ruined everything. I'm sure Amy Jo has probably heard that from several people. <laughs> but, but hey, hey, they came back for the reboot movie for yes. that little cameo. And I, they are together. in my mind, I, they're married. Yes. <laughs> in that, in that universe, that, that, that ship is sailing on yep. and I love it. <laughs> yeah. Head cannon accepted. You don't even have to you don't I don't need I don't need anybody to tell me yes or no on that that that, that happened. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Exactly. So. so yes, Planet Comic Con, Tommy and Kimberly together again. Together again. Yes. Do, do, do. Yeah. I don't even know if that's the right tune for that, but yeah. whatever. Close enough. We'll make it work. Yeah. <laughs> Good old Muppets take Manhattan. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then uh, kind of round out the news. Uh, that's it for convention news. But we got a couple of trailers. Uh, uh, one dropped today, this morning, actually. It yeah. Was, it was funny because uh, Andre, Blackner Comedy, did a, a reaction video on his channel today, and he's like, he says at the beginning, he's like, I was asleep, and I woke up, and couldn't fall back asleep, and I'm like, why am I awake? So he jumped up, uh, you know, got on Facebook or whatever, and saw there was a new Black Panther trailer, and he, he's like, Black Panther, it spoke to me in my sleep and said, wake up now, Andre, you must watch me. <laughs> so... <laughs> Me, not so much, but, uh, so yeah, yeah, we got a new trailer for Black Panther, and it looks awesome. Uh, it, 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 it does quite a bit. I like how at the opening, it's like, you know, I've seen gods, I've seen aliens, and there's this futuristic city that's in, you know, in the middle of Africa. Yeah. On this planet. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, guys, what's, we're doing this. Yep. We are totally I'm bad. going to admit I'm a bad fan girl, but I didn't even know there was a trail until right now. <laughs> In my defense, hey, you know, I had grandma time today. <laughs> I was okay. with my grandma almost all day. You're okay. You are You're totally fine. fine. In the in the hierarchy of uh, of uh, priorities, grandparents rank just slightly higher than Marvel. <laughs> yes. Yes. Just a little. You're fine, Brittany. You are you are excused. Well, you can watch it after and tell us all about it. What you think? Yes. So, but it does look pretty cool. I'm I'm excited. So at the same time, I'm like, okay, that comes out in February, which is four months from now. We've gotten two trailers for Black Panther. Where's the Infinity War trailer? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Although the, the 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 rampant uh speculation is that we may not necessarily we will get an Infinity War trailer, but if they think that they're gonna do it similar to um 
Captain America First Avenger, where the, the trailer episode. the trailer for the Avengers gets tied to the end of the movie. Ah, uh, so so instead of instead of there being a, a actual post credit sequence, they get the trailer. Possibly, that's what people are speculating at this point, considering we're like two weeks away from for Ragnarok. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> at this point, and maybe there's something happens in Thor that a trailer for Infinity War would spoil. That's possible too. I don't know. That's just that was just my random thought. I have no reason to think that. Yeah, it's very possible. It's very you could possible. Be onto something there, Chrissy. So. No, but we've yeah. only got a couple weeks to go before Thor Ragnarok, so we're going to find out one way or another. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But until then, we can keep watching Black Panther trailer. Uh, yeah, so there's that. It does look quite, quite cool. Yes. And then when you get sick of Marvel, you can watch Ad, Ad, uh, Infantium, the trailer for The Last Jedi. <laughs> If you haven't drop. done something enough already. <laughs> Which some people have, and they've already screenshotted and blown it up and, mm-hmm. and you know, gone over the minutest of details. Oh, like, what yes. does this... What does this mean? What, what does this mean? What is, it, what is this eyebrow hair on the porg mean? I'm like, I don't know. It oh, yeah. means, you, means you should buy your tickets and go see the movie when it comes out. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which I have done. <laughs> there you go. I've got, my, I've got my Last Jedi ticket, so I'm ready to go. Uh... But yeah, it that was it aired during Monday halftime Monday night football last Monday, so it was well after we'd finished recording last mm-hmm. Monday. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. I'm like, come and on, during one of the worst football games ever. Yeah, that too. I guess they needed those ratings. Mm. I guess, but I I did like how they had like stormtroopers there mm-hmm. in like the broadcast booth. With the commentators, and then they had stormtroopers come out into the field at halftime. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then the trailer dropped, and everyone lost their collective minds. Mm-hmm. So, which I, a lot of people, supposedly the director said, you shouldn't watch the trailer because it's, spo- it's got spoilers in it. Which, if you take it at face value, it potentially could be spoiler but as we know with these movies ev- pretty much everything is out of context yes so direction it's and all, all that direction so i would although i would not i would not take everything it literally the way it looks in the movie so. yeah although i I, I'm just I'm gonna come out and say it, and I know people are gonna be mad at me, and you no, and you guys might not agree with me. I kind of hope Ray tur- does turn to the dark side, just because it would be something different. That's true. And and yeah. new, and so far I don't know. Ray has just kind of been a little too perfect for me. So I like if they if they turn that around and she became Darth, whatever, I'd be fine with that. It'd be interesting. Yep. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it, it, yeah, I mean, I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm always excited mm-hmm. for new Star Wars. It's, it's not my main fandom. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely with the, you know, the, the, this renaissance or whatever that, that, uh, that the Star Wars franchise is having with, um, you know, now that Disney owns them and is in control and, you know, they had J.J. Abrams direct the first one to kind of set the tone for everything and, you know, did a really, really good job. Um, I'm definitely finding myself enjoying Star Wars and getting more into it. You know, I'll, I don't think I'll ever be like, oh, Star Wars, but, you know, I'm totally down for Star Wars. I will oh, not yeah. say no. So. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, it's one of those. It's like, yes, I will go see it opening night or opening weekend. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you know. I, I I do want to put in a quick plug here because I've been reading I've been reading this book. Um, it's called Leia, uh, Princess of Alderaan by Claudia Gray. It's a Ooh. it's geared. Have you read it? I'm like chapter seven or eight. Okay, I'm about halfway done through it, but I, I won't I won't say anything. 
That um, it's good. It's good. Yeah. yeah, it is really good. And and like it, the the cover at the top says "Path to Star Wars: The Last Jedi." But basically, this I'm is on a chapter young, seven. <laughs> yeah, this is basically a young Leia novel, yes. and it takes place on Alderaan, and you see her growing up, and you know, kind of the beginnings of the rebellion, and her different things like Tarkin. that. <laughs> yeah, so it's like. I'm reading this, and I'm like, I really want a young, like, reading young Han Solo, I really want a young Leia movie, or something, mm-hmm. including that, because I love Jimmy Smith's first off, yes. who plays her dad, mm-hmm. um, and that would just be so cool to see him actually be her dad, and we never got to see Alderaan in the movies, right, um, at all, so I'm like, nice this, to see, yeah, so, but, but, you know, this book, I'm like, this could be the Young Leia movie if they wanted it to be. But they mentioned a few things in the... Oh, I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> sorry. He disagrees, <He's> <laughs> apparently. <laughs> uh, but, well, um, we're heading into spoiler territory. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just saying, it, it mentioned it mentions a planet that you see on the in, in the Star Wars, the Last Jedi trailers. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Um, but that's all, okay, so that's all I'll say, but anyway, look that book up, it's, like, again, it's called Leia, Princess of Alderaan by Claudia Gray, and it is quite, quite good, a lot better, I don't know if anyone's read the Chuck Wendig books, but it's a lot better than... I've read some of the Chuck Wendig books, they're, they're okay, but this one I'm liking a lot better. Yeah, I, I tried to read, like, a, a few chapters of the first one he did, and it was not, not to my liking, <laughs> we'll say that. I'm flipping between the Leia one and then the Phasma one that just got released, and that one's interesting. The I haven't seen that one. Phasma. But I kinda, uh, I'll have to pick that one up. I just saw the Leia one at the library uh, a couple weeks ago, and I was like, oh, I'm going to try this. So. And I've been reading Phasma's it by Delilah, here and there. Delilah S. Dawson. Is that one you can't miss because it's got the the cover art is mm-hmm. Phasma Silver face mask. I love how I'm going on Amazon and looking at these Star Wars books and I promised myself I wasn't going to buy anything fandom related for a while. Cause well, where's your, where, wish list. where's your... <laughs> Where's your nearest? Yeah, wish list. Christmas is coming. Ah, that's true. <laughs> or library. I don't know what your yeah, what, what's the library like in your new town. <laughs> um, technically, well, I am. I don't really have a library. It's awkward. Oh. <laughs> and the okay. closest library to me, for some reason, the town thing. I don't know. It doesn't. It's weird. So I technically can't get a library card at that library. Well, that. Stone. That's, that's yeah. weird. Well, I'm sorry I brought, I brought that down. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Oops. Oh well. <laughs> the internet is your friend. If you don't, you know, if you don't live near a close library, there's I'm sure there's someone knows something i'm sure there's some sort of like online resource where you don't necessarily have to buy books but like some sort of like online library or something so if anyone knows anything is, send us a link. the only thing i can think of is because kindle unlimited where you pay it's like basically netflix for books yeah you pay a fee a monthly I do fee have, and... i have kindle unlimited unfortunately oh. that book isn't available ah. <laughs> really <laughs> i just checked oh. yeah. well that's stupid because usually sometimes some of those newer releases, they do that for a little mm-hmm. little bit where they offer them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all else fails to the internet. Yep. So it can always find what you're looking for. Hopefully. If it doesn't, it doesn't really exist. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> Uh, so yes, yeah, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, lots and lots of Star Wars, and everyone, the, and everyone seems to it seems to be evenly divided on the Porgs. They're either cute I like them. or <laughs> it's not. It, the, 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 <laughs> ugh, I can't talk. Um, the, the new... I want to see them in action. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they are cute. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're they're 
they they look like they can be cuddly, but I still, I still think BB-8 is precious. So mm-hmm. I think oh, people yes. are looking at the new Ewoks, yeah. which I like the Ewoks. Oh, me sorry. too. Me too. <laughs> and I, 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 although I did, Jared did explain this to me. Why? I mean, he doesn't mind them, but this like the reason people don't like the Ewoks is like it's it's a a civilization, or you know, it's these fighters with rocks and sticks versus the stormtroopers with their blasters and armor, and their their big machinery, and it's kind of that that's that's what that's what that that that's what annoys people about it, and I'm just like, okay, I can see that, but still, they're cute, mm-hmm. and the idea that they could have been eating stormtroopers at the end that they're yeah. Their party banquet <laughs> is a little disturbing, but also kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's just me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Anyway, mm-hmm. I guess we'll find out in uh, start in like two months. <laughs> yep. Yes, yep. not that far now, people. Yep. Star Wars is coming. Anyway. Yes. So. That is anyway. it for news for the most part. So, yay. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I will say, uh, uh, I guess thanks to everyone who's participating in the 31 Days of Halloween. There's some uh, people I know on Instagram that uh, are people I don't know. And I don't think any yeah. of us know that are participating. I, the, the list got shared by a couple of mm-hmm. random people, so it's kind of spread. Yeah. So that's kind of awesome. So yeah, I'm always excited to see what people come up with with their answers. It's like sometimes we all, some of us pick the same thing, and then sometimes we're completely separate answers for everybody. So mm-hmm. that's been fun. My Instagram's being stupid though; it won't let me post today. It's like I, I was behind. So I was able to post the other two for t- the last two days, but for some reason. It's not letting me post for today's. Mm-hmm. I'm saying we'll try again once the better, there's a better connection. It's been like that for like two hours. Mm. Bad internet. Mm. Naughty, naughty internet. All oh, right. Well, speaking of Doctor Who, I guess my segue there. Uh, <laughs> smooth, Rachel. Smooth. Um, so yesterday I was at Who North America all day, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing, uh, for, um, kind of their thrown together last minute day event thing with Caitlin Blackwood, AKA young Amy Pond, AKA Amelia Pond, AKA the girl who waited, um, Whatever you want to call her. She's got five million names. Um, <laughs> got their suitcase and little red wellies. Yes. Um, so this was uh, something that uh, Keith and Janie were able to, um, I guess, come up with. Um, when uh, Time Lord Expo got canceled, um, like Caitlin and her mom and you know, the other people that were going to be traveling with her um, their airline tickets had already been bought and they were going to, you know, they were working on trying to get a refund, um, and we're going to cancel everything. But then, um, some of the, uh, folks that were, um, one of the vendors and, and sponsors from Time Lord Expo, Wibbly Wobbly Timey Wimey, um, who were, also, the folks who were sponsoring Terry Malloy, aka Davros, to come to Time Lord Expo, um, were able to work with a comic shop in Dublin, Ohio, which is actually closer to Columbus and Dayton. But they were able to um, work out a one-day event called that they were calling Ohio Who. So um, they, you know, Caitlin and you know her family just kept their airline tickets and came out anyway. And then Terry Malloy came out to the event that was out in uh, Ohio. Um, So she was at that on Saturday. 
Um, but then they were able to, uh, you know, Keith and Janie, they talked to her mother because um, uh, Caitlin's mother, Linda, uh, kind of works as her, her agent. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, they are like, Dee, like, would you be interested in coming, you know, driving from Ohio to Indiana for the day? You know, we can set up a, you know, a, a spot for you to sign autographs and take pictures and that sort of thing. And they, they agreed. Um, so that was the event yesterday. They set up a, a backdrop that kind of looks like the, the, the panels on a Dalek with the, the ball things. Um, and a table and a light for her to, you know, take picture or sign autographs for folks. And then she, she had pictures, um, that she could autograph if people didn't have something they already wanted autographed. Um, um, unfortunately she was a little late yesterday. They got lost. Um, the, the GPS, uh, apparently Google still thinks that who North America is still located at their old location. Oh, <laughs> that'll do it. Uh, so if you Google North America, it may try to take you to the old location. Um, and that's something that they've tried to get Google to fix, and they just have not done it yet. Um, so uh, it took them there. And shake then, my fist at Google. Yes, and then, unfortunately... <laughs> They realized they were in the wrong, they weren't in the right place, and their GPS decided to go out on them. Uh, <laughs> so they had to uh, pull into, uh, I think it was a hotel in the area, and utilize their Wi Fi in the lobby. Um, and thankfully, Caitlin had been in contact with KJ, um, who's a, a DJ here in Indianapolis. She's a huge Doctor Who fan. I've talked about her before. She's the one that. Put to help put together the 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 Make a Wish fundraisers um, that we had earlier in the year that we had the party for at Who North America because uh, KJ had actually had Caitlin on the air earlier this week or last week to talk about her appearance here um, so she had been in contact with Caitlin and was able to get a hold of her and uh, from there Keith was able to direct them <laughs> to. The proper address <laughs> for the shop. So, and it was raining and it was cold and dreary. And I know there were wrecks on the interstate. So it was just, it was kind of a hot mess, but it's okay. Everyone was, you know, uh, there was a, a, a decent amount of people that showed up already and were waiting, but they were all patient. They were shopping the store, which is never, not necessarily a bad thing. It's like, hey, make them wait. Maybe they'll buy more things. Uh <laughs> Um, so they, she showed up, um, and, you know, jumped right on it with signing autographs and taking, you know, selfies with people and that sort of thing. We had a decent crowd for the first hour or so, um, with a, a, a good line, uh, of a steady line of people. Um, I, Janie ended up, um, I was supposed to interview Caitlin uh, before everything started, but because she got there late, um, KJ needed to do her interview because she was supposed to be live on Facebook. Um, so people were waiting for that. And then there was another gal from another radio station that she was on a deadline. So they, uh, you know, Janie asked me if I could wait till later in the day. I said, that's fine. Um, and then Janie ended up asking me if I could help at the table, um, <clears throat> where the, the, the sales, where they were collecting the money for the photos and the autographs, um, which I ended up sitting there and helping um, Marie. Unfortunately, Caitlin's mother got sick and had to stay at the hotel. Um, but um, Caitlin was there with her boyfriend and her boyfriend's mother, Marie, who's a really cool lady. I love her. We, we hit it off right away. Um, so I had lots of fun sitting there talking to her and talking to the, you know, the fans, they'd come up and be like, Oh, where are you from? And, um, that sort of thing. And actually Marie is not really a doctor who fan. She didn't really know. She knew about it being from Scotland, you know, being from the UK, you know, it's part of the culture. It's ingrained. Um, but she didn't, she wasn't really a doctor who fan and really watched anything until her son started dating Caitlin. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but uh but uh um but we we just had fun talking about doctor who and 
you know, the differences in food for, you know, the here in the U S versus in Scotland and, uh, you know, the, the weather with it being cold and rainy, they all felt like they were right at home. <laughs> like we did that just for you. Um, so, but we, it was, it was fun to meet the fans, um, and talk to fellow Whovians and, and that sort of thing. We ended up going to, uh, at the lunch break, we went to Arby's and they all got to have Arby's for the first time. Oh, uh, wow. So they know that was something they'd never had before. Marie kept saying, she's like, I, you know, she's like, diet has been, just been awful since I got here to the States. I'm like, yes, I know our, we love grease and salt and fat <laughs> here in the United States. Um, she's like, I feel like I'm gonna have to go run a marathon or something after after eating all this. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm sorry, that's just the we that's the way we we roll here in the United States. Um, but uh, they 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 enjoyed it. They 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 all enjoyed the the Arby's for for lunch. Um, and then uh, I ended up uh, getting to interview Caitlin later in the day. Um, and she's such a nice girl. She's so sweet. It's it's kind of surreal, you know, because you think young Amy Pond, and we all think of that, you know, however old she was when she did Doctor Who, like eight or nine or something. Um, you know, that little girl with her her welly sitting on her suitcase in the in the garden, waiting for the Raggedy Man to come back in his magic box. Um, and now she's 17 in college and has a boyfriend. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't you don't really realize how fast the years go by when you think back. Oh, it's it's been only it's only been seven years. Well, you know, seven years from you know when you're a little when you're a little kid until mm -hmm. you're a teenager. It's not that it's not that big of a leap. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> um, but she's she's super sweet. Uh, so kind. She was just so excited to meet everyone and talk about Doctor Who and um, you know her experiences and taking pictures of people. And her boyfriend is is he's real quiet, but he's super nice. He was taking pictures for people. You know, if you're you know you get uh, you get folks that aren't necessarily comfortable with either taking selfies or just using their cell phone to take a picture. Have the 19-year-old teenager do the picture taking for you. If you're going to hand your phone off to someone, it might as well be a teenager. <laughs> They'll know exactly what to do. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> um, so, uh, but uh, yeah, she she was super sweet. We had a nice uh, a nice conversation. Uh, my interview with her, which I'll I'll insert into the the uh, the, the podcast episode, so you can uh, you hear it. Um, but it was, it was, it was fun to, to, to talk to her about not just Dr. Who, um, but some of the other things that she's worked on since then, um, you know, she kind of had a, a gap in there where she didn't really work on anything just cause, you know, she was young and, and, and you know, young, the younger schooling years are important. It's important to get that education. But now that she's gotten a little older, like um, she's she's uh, taking on more acting roles. And um, I asked her about a couple of projects. We, I, we joked because, as we say several times on the podcast, the UK has 12 actors. And look at, <laughs> looking at Caitlin's uh, CV, there, it's, it's evidence right there because she's got – Two projects, one that's completed and one that she's going to get back to working on hopefully next year. And one um, involves Sylvester McCoy. <laughs> and the other involves Fraser Hines. <laughs> yeah. You, you watch enough British British TV and yeah. you, uh, you, you, you run into someone from Doctor Who or Harry Potter or something. Yeah, that Venn diagram just overlaps. Doctor Who, Harry Potter, and like Game of Thrones, it's all like the same people. So pretty much, yes. <laughs> and they've all done, and they've all done uh, uh, BBC radio productions of Jane Austen. At yes, some point. probably. <laughs> yeah. I should probably apologize first. I've been like here all day hanging out and helping you, and I don't think I've ever properly introduced my. So, hi, my name is Rachel. Hi. <laughs> I've only been helping you handle money all day and making sure that, you know, people get the tickets and uh, get your autograph and everything. So, yeah. I'm just standing in the background and watching that. I think you're a long time away. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, I already I already gave you a couple copies of my of my card, and I gave her one to give to your mother too. Your mom's actually tweeted tweeted me a couple of times. Yeah. Like, Will you share the event in Ohio? I'm like, sure, absolutely. Yeah. So like I made sure to mention on the podcast and tweet it and all that fun stuff, so people Thank knew you where you were yesterday and trying to do the yeah. thing today so um but i do have a, a couple of questions for sure, you sure. um some from my me and then i have one from one of my co-hosts i guess i could start with chrissy's question too um her question was doctor who related and um uh, word on the street is matt smith is really good with kids uh, and was really good with with kids on the set of Doctor Who, you know, like Amy and Rory's wedding, you know, had all the kids him dancing like a drunk giraffe. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, it was, you know, being such a, a young girl, you know, on the set of this this TV show that has such a long history, did, did Matt, was, is, is he as goofy on set as he seems to be off set? And did, did he, you know, was he his natural goofy self to uh, make you feel more comfortable? Yeah, he was, um, he was amazing to work with. I think that because I was so, you know, I was really scared at first mm -hmm. doing such, I mean, you walk on set, there's people watching you doing what you're doing, cameras, lights, everything. So um, I was really scared at first, but he made it, me feel quite comfortable. He was very patient with me as well because obviously I'd never acted before, so I had no idea what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So for um, so for scenes that I couldn't, you know, pick up straight away, he was very patient and waiting um, until I got it right. Um, and yeah, he really is like his goofy. Yes, yeah. so <laughs> I is. imagine so. Yeah, yeah. he. Um, we had to do a lot of early morning shoot so we had to be up and in work for 6 a.m mm -hmm. stuff like that um and he was so excited goofy ready to go he was just he was amazing to he's probably with. like a shot of espresso yeah he really <laughs> is that's like the perfect yeah. way to yeah. describe that actually <laughs> matt smith shot of espresso <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um so uh one of the things that we like to joke about on the podcast because we talk about a lot of british shows you know doctor who and um, all other sorts of things is we like to joke that the UK only has 12 actors <laughs> yeah because like yeah because <laughs> everybody is in everything you watch Harry Potter and you're like oh you've been in Doctor Who you watch Game of Thrones and you're like oh you've been in Doctor Who and Harry Potter <laughs> so you know the UK has like 12 actors and I was on your website and uh, and, and looking at you know the things that you, you've been working on since Doctor Who and you've got two projects um, that you've worked on recently, um, a movie called Journey Bound, um, with, which happens to have Sylvester McCoy in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who is? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who is in Doctor Who? Um, uh, so I guess first tell, tell me a bit about, about Journey Bound. Well, we actually haven't filmed Journey Bound yet. Yeah. Um, because of Sylvester's schedule and stuff yeah. like that, it's hard to work around everyone's schedule. He's so busy. He is. He's always doing something, <laughs> yeah. I think. Um, so that's not actually been filmed yet. Yeah. yeah. Well, when there's only 12 yeah. actors, you know, you, you, get a, you get a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I'm hoping to film that at some point next year. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm... I'm looking forward to doing it. I'm looking forward to working with Sylvester. Yeah. Um, and there's a few Scottish comedians and stuff like that that's in it that I love. So I'm excited to work with yeah. them as well. Yeah. And then the the other one, um, which is being produced, I guess, by the same the same company that's doing Journey Man Magic Monkey Films, yeah. um, is the, the short film Sundown with Fraser Hines, yeah. <laughs> who we all know is Jamie, yeah. the second doctor. <laughs> yeah. So so you tell me tell me a bit about uh, about Sundown. It, it looks. Um, I watched the the trailer, the little teaser that they've got up online, and it it looks it looks quite interesting. It looks very dramatic uh -huh. and probably kind of sad. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wish I don't like to be sad, but <laughs> it's um yeah. It was me and Fraser. Fraser went out to the Isle of Iona in mm -hmm. Scotland to film for three days, um, and it's it's a nice movie. It's it's not. It's it looks sad. Um, but it's more of like an uplifting, optimistic mm -hmm. kind of thing behind it as well. Um, but working with Fraser was just insane. Yeah. <laughs> He's always got jokes to crack, like, and you never know to take him seriously or not. Yeah. He'll tell you about all these, about how Haggis Haggis has like three legs and one shorter than the other or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
he's a he's a fun guy to work with as well. Yeah. 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 Well, I knew the rate you're going, you're going to end up working with everybody who's yeah. been in a Doctor Who ever because yeah. there's 12 actors and all of them have been Doctor Who and apparently Game of Thrones yeah. <laughs> and Harry Potter. So, well, that's that's very nice. Um, I guess my, my last question is, um, in your, your interview you did with KJ, um, you mentioned that you didn't really have aspirations to be an actress before the role of, of Amy came came across. Um but uh, so before, you know, now that your focus is acting, but before, you know, acting was, um, you know, something that you're now focusing on. What, what did you, what were your dreams uh, as a little girl? You know, did you want to be a, a, a vet or, you know, something like that? You know, every, every child thinks about what they're going to be when they grow up. <laughs> I mean, I wanted to be an archaeologist when I was a kid because I watched Indiana Jones and I thought that was the coolest thing ever and then realized it's not actually that exciting, so. Um, when I was younger, I just, I thought that being like actress and stuff like that was, you know, a non-realistic dream. Um, but yeah, I used to want to be, it was a vet one week and then the next week it was yeah. a teacher yeah. and then the next week it was, a, I don't know, a doctor. Yeah. It was just, yeah. Of those the cycles that kids go yeah. through, they like they watch some television program and they're like, I want to be that now. Yeah. I want to be a ski instructor. <laughs> yeah, that's that. That was my dreams and aspirations as a kid to be everything. Everything. Yeah. everything. Well, and being an actress, you can. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Because now you can, you can, you, you don't have to be a doctor. You can just play one on TV. True. So awesome. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. So, so okay. I have to tell a quick story just because that the, the the whole you know twelve actors in Britain reminded me. Yeah. So I I borrowed um I, I'm borrowing my my brother in law's Audible account because he's got some audio books that I wanted to to listen to and he's like well here just just listen to them on mine don't buy them so I'm like okay. So and I was looking through the rest of his library and I found this this uh th this one that Jane Austen uh five Jane Austen novels and as full video dramas David Tennant's in it and Benedict Cumberbatch is in it and I don't know how old this thing is like I'm yeah they're 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 in everything. Hello? 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 Uh-oh. Uh-oh, hello? The Skype monster is, uh, is, has attacked. Oh, no! Uh, hi, hello. No. I'm on. Gosh dang it. Okay, I can I, I could hear you typing. Yeah. Okay. You guys are there. Hello. Momentary can, gremlin. Okay. Momentary gremlin attack. Oh, okay. Bad okay. gremlin. Bad gremlin. So, so I, I should I tell my story again then? <laughs> well, it did break up there a little, so. Okay. You said something so, about David Tennant and Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> yeah, that was it. They they were they were in it, and that's when I was like, okay, yeah, I need to download this and 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 listen to it. I'm sure that's the only reason my, my brother-in-law had that one. <laughs> Unless his wife picked it out on his account, which, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just, I, I found that today and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to listen to this. So, yeah. Twelve actors in Britain and mm -hmm. they've all done the same basic things. So I look forward to hearing Caitlin in a production of Pride and Prejudice or, or Sins and Sensibility at some point. <laughs> It'll happen eventually, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, if, if, not, thing, like, if not Jane Austen. If not Jane Austen, then Charles Dickens. Yes. <laughs> and at some point she'll need to uh, she'll need to cut her teeth on Shakespeare, but she's young, so she's got time. Oh, yes. <laughs> Give her 10, 15 years, Caitlin Blackwood in a production of Twelfth Night or something, yeah. <laughs> yes. 
Ooh, she'd be she'd be good at in twelfth night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, what you do about nothing. That oh yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, so yeah, she's a super she's a super sweet kid, and I know uh, we went to we went to dinner afterwards um, before they had to take off to go to go back to Ohio, um, and. Uh, you know, we're sitting around the table. It's just, you know, me and Keith and Janie and their two sons and uh, another friend, a guy that did, does, did the uh, some uh, graphic design work for the shop. Um, you know, and we're just talking about this, that, and the other thing. And Janie had asked Caitlin about, you know, how many conventions she's done and, you know, where the, where all they've taken her. And she talked about how she's done, uh, like, New York Comic Con. And she's been to Los Angeles. She's, yeah. she's done Gallifrey. Um, she's been to Atlanta. Um, and she said something about Kansas City. <laughs> mm-hmm. I said, oh, yeah, you did Planet Comic Con a few years ago, didn't you? She's like, yeah. I said, Karen crashed your panel, didn't she? She's like, yeah, she did. I said, the guys that moderated your panel are friends of mine. They're our brother podcast. <laughs> <laughs> nice. She's like, really? That's so yeah, now yeah. now she's been on both our podcasts. She has. Yep. Yep. So I made sure to send off. I, I made sure to send off feedback to the guys last night saying, "Caitlin says hi." <laughs> so <laughs> nice. Uh, but she, I, I hadn't thought of that until just now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, yeah, she's she's super nice. I, I told I told her. Uh, um, as they were getting ready to leave after we had dinner, uh, I told her, uh, I told her when she sees Karen at Christmas, cause she said she, she'll more likely see Karen, uh, at Christmas time. I said, you'll need to tell Karen, uh, about your adventures here. Cause I bet she doesn't get treatment like this at, uh, the convention she goes to. <laughs> Does she get taken to Arby's and then, uh. Then oh Charlie's is for dinner? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> So, but it was it was fun, and I think I think uh, I think Janie's already plotting to try to get Caitlin to come back next year for something. <laughs> so, nice. Want to nice. see Caitlin again next year? Who knows? <laughs> so that was fun. I mean, it was uh, no no offense to you know anyone. You know, obviously it was not time at uh, Time Lord Expo. It's it's not the convention that I've been you know working on and looking forward to for you know months on end but you know, for something that was thrown together rather quickly i think i think everything went went well every someone seemed to be very happy um you know caitlin seemed to be very happy you know, keith and janie seemed to be the, the turnout of the shop especially considering sundays is a day they're not usually open um mm-hmm. so it really gave them another day of 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 business um, and seem, people seem to be buying stuff from the shop, uh, so it was a that's good good time had by all. It was quite interesting to be on that side of the table. Uh, <laughs> I can add that to my resume now. I guess my convention resume because uh, I'm used to you know going up and handing money and you know being on that side of. You know, like, I'd like to pay for an autograph, please. I'd like to pay for a photo, please. I mean, I did pay for, I did get a, a picture with Caitlin. Uh, I posted on, on Instagram, and I did get an autograph. I've now added her to my my collection. She signed next to Karen, so. Um, nice. Yeah, so I got a nice little nice little pair there. Um, she, was quite, she was quite interested to hear about the other autographs that I have. She's like, who else do you have on here? I said, well, that one's Jenna. She's like, you've met Jenna? Like yeah, <laughs> she's never met Jenna. See, even even the stars get starstruck sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But then she recognized Sophie's because Sophie's Sophie Aldred's autograph is actually legible. You can read that it says Sophie Aldred. Um, yep. And then I've got John Barrowman's on there too, and she was quite excited to hear that I've I've met John as well. <laughs> so. Nice. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, I did. I did pay for an autograph and a, and a photo. And, yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm, I'll make sure she she makes her money for you know to help cover expenses for coming all the way out here. Um, but uh, it was a uh, it was very laid back, very chill, which was which was nice. So I I did like that. I did like how laid back it was. It's like people were just you know she got. Yeah, she could have conversations with people. You know, if there was a line, she talked to people for quite a long time, and 
you know, nobody was overly pushy or anything. There were several people that were very excited. I'm pretty sure I saw tears from a few people that were like, oh my God, I'm so excited to finally meet her. So uh, that's always a fun thing to see the fan. Yeah. The really excited fans. You know, oh yeah. Be, be super excited to finally meet someone that they enjoy so much. So it was oh, fun. Oh, for sure. So Ho hopefully that, you know, so if this went well enough, you know, not only having C Caitlin come back at some point, but hopefully maybe this is something that who North America can do again, uh, down the line with other who alumni so anyway so that was my that was my day yesterday <laughs> at who north america and alex is jealous <laughs> yeah she <laughs> is tiny he's, is jealous. he's getting mad at me He's jealous. He's like, "Come on, mom, let's let's move, get a move on, get to once upon a time, get to the important." Yes, stuff here. So. <laughs> he's actually seen both those episodes. He now. has. Now he's he's, re he's ready to give his opinion on season yes. seven of Once Upon a Time. So, Tiny, what'd you think? <laughs> well, <laughs> he's now he's quiet. Now he's nice. Now, he's, now he's, yeah, now he goes quiet. <laughs> he's like, "Oh, now I'm on the spot." <laughs> well, no, no. This this is what happened. Is I I went to I I went to my uh, first day of my new job, new old job, today, and uh, he stayed home with with his grandpa, and I got home just not before a little bit before we started recording, and uh, he hasn't really seen me for a few hours. <laughs> so, but he's he'll be okay. But anyway, once upon a time, I. You, you all know, last season, when we were finishing up, we were talking about, you know, the, the ending of last season. I mm -hmm. was like, why did they renew this show? We it's, were on soapboxes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> there were soapboxes. Words were had. Yes. <laughs> and, and most of them directed it at the ABC executives. Because, you know, the, the Once Upon a Time writer's room, they wrapped it up. They are like, okay, mm -hmm. we're done. We can, we, we can, you know, you can't, if we, if we don't come back next season, we can, we can handle it. And we'll go on to something else. So this is all, that was all directed at, at the network. So, so far, and I was like, well, you know, we'll give it a shot. It's going to be a whole new thing. And it's, I'm kind of treating it like a spinoff more, more mm -hmm. or less. Yes. And especially this last uh, episode really cemented that decision was, was a good one. Mm -hmm. Because, well, I guess, let's see. Well, well, I guess we'll get to it, but. But yeah, it's this is an all new. This is basically an all new show. This is Once yes. Upon a Time: The Henry Mills Adventures. Yes. yes. <laughs> it's the unofficial subtitle. Ooh. Yeah. Or you know whatever you want to call it. So you know it, it starts off with young Henry leaving uh, his his Regina mom's house, <laughs> mm -hmm. and he's got a, he's, he wants to go make his own way in the world, and he goes. He has a magic bean. Which, for as rare as those magic beans are supposed to be, they always seem to find one when they need it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But he goes, what'd you say? That's magic. Too. That's magic. Too. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Jared's in here and he's listening in. <laughs> he's giving his two cents. <laughs> but yeah, that's magic too. So, and then, you know, and Henry goes to a new fairy tale realm, which I guess is not the Enchanted Forest, grows nope. up, meets Cinderella, or a different version of Cinderella, and and he falls in love with her, And but, but she has a wicked stepmother who is, yeah, they all do, and who just is... <laughs> She's a piece of work, I gotta yes. say. I, lo I love your, she, I love she's your giving nickname Regina a run for her money and Cora. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I just I think I'm hitting home more than I hated Regina before Regina was good. Yeah, yeah. I, I love yeah. your nickname for her, though, Chrissy. Yes, <laughs> yes. Evil, evil oh, Jared, Jared said. He, he he said I should call her a mouthy piece of work. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 But I, I'm going. I'm still going. Yeah. My, well, you, you you alluded to it, Rachel. My my nickname for her, the evil lip mother because yes. I, I mean I'm not one to to typically you know rag on people for how they look, but I could not stop staring at that woman's lips. <laughs> <laughs> they were they, they 
it just don't fit with the rest of her face. I don't know if it's the makeup department or what, but something is wrong. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She doesn't really look like she did when she was in Bird Notice and when she was in movie two of the librarians. (laughs) Yeah. But, yeah, I just... I'm still enjoying. Oh, yeah. Although... I, did I miss it? Like, where did she get her magic? I don't think that's been revealed. Well, I, th- I don't know if it's been revealed yet because I know she wanted Grady and Cinderella's fairy mm-hmm. godmother's wand. And I don't think she technically has magic, magic. but she can use other, other yeah. magic. Yeah. Okay, because I, I was like, I missed something. Of course, there's been moments where I've had to, you know, get up and, and do other things while I'm watching the show. And I'm like, did I just yeah. not see that, or did I? So I, mean, I get didn't distracted? see it. Yeah, I don't Got think she technically has magic. Hasn't been revealed yet. Just, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, you know the, the way that I know how the show. Picks. Yeah. Yeah, I know how the show operates. It's not linear, so I'm I'm okay yeah. with not knowing yet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, how, like, why is like, like, how can she be so intim- Like, how can she intimidate people and be so mean? Like this, I mean, okay, I can understand why why Regina was and the evil queen because she had magic and she could really make your life miserable, turn you into a a mouse or something, and sick the cat on you. But mm-hmm. but this woman is just, you know, she just glares at you. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I, I I definitely get the idea. I get get the feeling she is going to get her comeuppance, and it's going to be de- delicious. Oh yes, yes. Mm-hmm. either Thanks. either Ronnie or Weaver. <clears throat> Yeah. Yes. Or a combination of the two. Or both. Or yeah. both. Once they yeah. get un- once they get uncursed and they're like, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> you Watch hated the it. Fur fly. Yeah. yeah. No, I, Neither I do, are going to be I happy. do like. Yeah. yeah. Assume, assuming that neither Regina or Gold slash Rumple <laughs> slash whatever. Um, yep. Yeah. You know, at this point, they don't remember who they are, which we haven't gotten that impression mm-hmm. that e- any any of the people remember who they are, except for Henry's daughter, but she's the exception. Yeah. She's the, or, he- she's or the Henry this time. Possibly, like, Alice, I think, must suspect something. Or, no, she has a... Well, she, she made that one comment. She's just like, well, don't you know your grandpa knows everybody? Yeah. So I'm wondering if Gold kind of Gold Flash Weaver kind of has a sneaky feeling as to who he is. I'm just thinking back to season one when he was he knew behind exactly bars and Regina was. was taunting him with Bell's mm-hmm. chipped yeah. cup that he yeah. doesn't know a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, we in the in the very beginning of the show with Regina's original dark curse, he knew exactly who he was. So oh, yeah. there's a precedent. Yeah. There's a precedent there for Rumpel not being completely mm-hmm. affected by a curse. So yeah, it is. It is possible, but I almost get the impression that maybe Hook maybe remembers who he is, or he, he at least like like he things are coming through to him. Like the the picture of Emma yeah. Yeah. in the first in the first episode, which I'm like. Way, way, way to do misdirection, guys. Like, yes. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I had no idea how they were going to do, you know, because Jennifer Morrison isn't on the show anymore. I didn't know how they were going to do Hook and Emma at all. It's like, yeah. how? Like they just got work? their happy and, ending, and you're going to break that I know. Up? Mm-hmm. It, yeah. yeah. I, that, that was what I was the most upset about. It's like, okay, yeah, I, I, I'll i take more Hook, but you got to, you got to, you, you, you can't take away their happy ending. And, I was just, I was, and this was in the last episode, I was just so impressed with the way they pulled it off with, oh, remember that one, that, that one comic relief version of Hook that was just kind of yep. a joke in the mm-hmm. Wish Guess universe? What? He's back. We're gonna, <laughs> he's back, and we're gonna, you know, make him look young, and so we don't have to put, put Colin in makeup every week, mm-hmm. and, and with the hair, and, and he, he's Hook, he's just not the Hook you're used to. That he's Hook is a, in Storybrooke with, with Emma and their new baby mm-hmm. will be like, will be baby that's a good way to do it <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah i mean okay so one thing i am a little confused about and 
this I'm sure there's probably a simple once upon a time wibbly wobbly timey wimey explanation. So obviously Henry is quite a bit older now. He's an adult. Yes. He got married at some point and had a kid and you know, mm-hmm. Lucy or whatever her name is, um is is about Henry's age when the show started. So a yeah. good amount of yeah. a good amount of time has passed, at least for Henry in that realm. But how time passing in Storybrook? My my guess is okay. I guess my guess is twofold: is that not quite as much time has passed, but at the same time, oh, I'm sorry, honey. Um, sorry, I've got Alex here. Um, and possibly also that people in Storybrook still don't age. As, as in the normal world. I mean, because with the original curse, people didn't age at all for 28 years. Yes. And they must, I mean, they must still age a little bit after the curse is broken. But not quite as much? I don't know. Yeah. I, oh, look it, at baby charming. Yeah. That is true. He, he stayed a baby for several seasons. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they finally just dropped the whole... Oh, the, 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 the whole timeline thing because now they just say Storybrook many years ago or present yeah. day or things like that mm-hmm. yeah yeah because I was just I was just curious because um, I mean you can easily you know I guess explain good genetics as far as Regina is concerned mm-hmm. you know that mm-hmm. that uh, you know she she looks as good but it's like I didn't I wasn't sure exactly how much time has passed because I mean as old as Henry is, Emma would have to be quite a bit old beyond childbearing years. But if time has not yeah. passed as much, then, uh, or maybe, or maybe, you know, the folks of Storybook are kind of like, uh, I don't know if they're kind of like, kind of like Aragorn from Lord of the Rings where, you know, he looks like he's in his forties, but he's really almost 90, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they just really don't really get, well, really We slowly. don't know how fast time is going in that alternate realm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Henry could be rapid age aging mm-hmm. and everybody else is nice and <laughs> Yeah. So I mean it I mean it, it it makes sense, you know, Hook and Emma, they get their happy ending. Emma finally gets to, you know, be uh you know, play mom to an actual infant and raise a child from from infancy because she didn't get to do that with with, with Henry. You know, it's kind of like with the Charmings, you know, well, so they got a second chance with baby Neil. Um, so it's kind of the, the same thing. Yeah. Uh, and I wonder, too, if, you know, their their reaction when, when Regina, Hook, and Emma came back and see, oh, hey, you're all grown up. I wonder if that was like, wow, time really passed a long, you know, passed... Yeah, quickly here, and mm-hmm. not so much in Storybrooks. I wonder if it was just you know a surprise. I don't know. Yeah, just something so, I was thinking about. Yeah. yeah, even even before the second episode, even in the first episode, I'm like, how much time has passed exactly here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were really vague. <laughs> yes, they were very yeah. vague. Yeah, which is they probably learned from from. Their uh, earlier, their earlier, I don't want to call it a mistake, but their what they did when they had to have a certain timeline, and everybody started pointing out. They're like, "Okay, no more timelines. Just be as vague as possible." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Vague is your best friend in this case. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, and I'm and 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 the uh, you know, in in the end, I'm just like, it's magic. Yeah. I will go with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And those portals, I'm liking the way they look. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it, it, cool. it, it almost it almost looks like the uh, the uh, the magic beans have uh, taken a uh, a page from a certain sorcerer supreme. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's all owned by Disney, so they're like, hmm, well, yeah. those those portals yeah. and Doctor Strange look really good. Let's, let's can, can we do those in the TV as well? So, Must be like, hey, it. default graphics package now. Okay, let's yeah. use this. Or, well, or maybe I mean, they all share the same file. Uh, 
file yeah. storage thing and like we're gonna borrow this yeah. thanks yeah <laughs> well i mean the, the 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 few portals that we saw in in agents of shield last season with, mm-hmm. with ghost rider where he was doing the when he came back for the the end of the season and with the chains and was able to do almost a doctor strange thing and they look very similar so mm-hmm. disney's probably like that graphic we can just we could just use that special effect we're gonna we're gonna get our money's oh, worth yeah, out of it. Yeah, we're getting the money's so. worth <laughs> for the, the Doctor Strange special effect. <laughs> so. uh, uh, yeah. No, so. it's 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 interesting. It's it's interesting. Mm-hmm. I wasn't sure what to expect with mm-hmm. Once Upon a Time coming back and yeah. going this direction, and apparently they weren't even sure. Supposedly, they the the writers really didn't have a plan for the a new season until mm-hmm. they came back to start writing this season. They're like, okay, now what do we do? Yeah, because <laughs> all they kind of did at the end was like, let's just mirror the first episode, but with Henry and his daughter, and we'll come back and figure it out later. Yes. So, I mean, so far, it's been fine. I mean, I, I expected, and maybe just, like, you know, having this this whole big, you know, new versions of the same characters kind of, it, it's kind of felt like it's it's breathed new life into it. Mm-hmm. Because now I feel like, like, okay, so Regina, well, Ronnie, with her bar, she's kind of like, that. that Ronnie's is the new granny's. Mm-hmm. So that's, yeah. so she's, I mean, she's not necessarily fulfilling the granny role, just doing that, but she's also, it's so that's hangout. part of it, but she's going to be. It's a place doing, for the characters uh, to go. <laughs> Hello? It's, it's, it, 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 it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, um, um, like, uh, the coffee shop and friends, you know, where they, just, the, the characters yeah. need a place to go and hang out. That's not mm-hmm. like their house. So yeah, that's that's well, what Ronnie's is. Yeah, and this seems to be like a a, a safe place away from uh, Victoria Belfry, mm-hmm. and you know, because she's trying to own everything, and she almost owned Ronnie's bar, and she's like, nope. Mm-hmm. And I'm I am curious. I feel like Regina has gotten to that place where maybe she finally got her happy ending in the other other realm, mm-hmm. and I I'm guessing we'll get that episode. So like her being Ronnie. It's like she's because she had that little that that big speech at the end of the first episode. It's like okay, I think she 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 knows. I think she's finally got got to that happy place where she oops, where she always wanted to be, and she just never got her happy ending and everything going wrong. But now I think okay, she must have gotten it because now she's like being the wise, uh, the, the well the imparter of wisdom. I was trying to think of something else to call her, but. As a good, so, you as a know, good bartender should be. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Rumple is is working things behind the scenes, and this new version of Hook, and he's got his own his own backstory that we're gonna delve into. So it's like he's a brand new character, and they're both partners. So this should be yeah. <laughs> I know that was like that. That was my favorite thing. Of like. Here's here you made detective and here's your partner and you're like okay <laughs> pass the nothing popcorn like, everybody <laughs> nothing like passing up two characters with a very interesting history yes. yeah. yeah and even though this isn't Emma's hook right he still has that back that background of going after the crocodile so it's yeah like, you know they're, they're, it's a new character but he's not that much different right. <laughs> Well, and okay. just the showdown that Rumpel or Weaver had with Victoria at the end of this episode two, it's just like, oh boy, this should be. <laughs> She's not in, in in as much control as she thinks she thinks is. She is. Oh, nope. yeah. And I'm fine with that because yeah. I can't stand the woman. <laughs> no, nope. I'm just like, sweetheart, once you find out who he truly is and he gets his memories back, oh boy. <laughs> yep. I, I'm thinking he might pull Vader, and I'm thinking Regina Ronnie might be ready in a few fireballs. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Excuse me. 
Or I'm just hoping they don't extend a branch into a family tree and sh- Victoria just happens to be related somehow. Uh, I hope not. Oh, well, I think yeah. where, where this is a whole new realm. Hopefully it'll um, be... It'll be... Uh, away from it. <laughs> Yeah, this is like this. This is this is injecting new blood. This isn't another. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, it it's part of of Henry Mill's family tree, but because he married into it, <laughs> yeah, and mm-hmm. he has a wife and a daughter. So okay, that that much, sure. But mm-hmm. it's not like she's some some long lost aunt or something. Yeah. yeah, we don't need any of that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well, I might be remembering this wrong, but the this hook doesn't he have a daughter? He has yes. a daughter, yeah. My my money is on on her being Alice. Ooh, I like that theory. That's a good theory. I don't really know why, other than the the chess pieces. Yeah, but, uh, I didn't think well, of that. Okay, but that I, makes sense. Yeah. Cause, well, when I first when he first said I have a daughter, and I was like thinking, well, Emma's pregnant; she's got to be. So Alice kind of looks like Emma, but then I but this was before I realized that this was a different like this this hook wasn't uh, Emma's hook. So and it makes me wonder who Mama is. We might have another version of Mila floating around somewhere. Maybe. Oh yes. Oh yeah. That's possible. That would put or an interesting spin com- on things. Yeah, or someone completely different. Right. Could be anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I Let's mean, see. That would that would make her, uh, uh, Henry's half aunt. Because yeah. she, it'd be Neil's half sister. No, we're not going down that. that, that yeah. Road. Oh yeah. That makes the head hurt. Let's let's not do that. Let's save Rachel. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, I've been watching the show for so long. I, I once you say you know, but once you incorporate it, I'm like, okay, now how would that make it if you yeah. carry the one, multiply by five. <laughs> Like Charlie said, good thing we don't do Thanksgiving in Storybrooke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Awkward Thanksgiving dinners. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, they kind of had that at the end of the uh, of season six. First, yeah, they did. The little dinner at Granny's and everybody's sitting at the table and it's like, hey, they finally had Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but as... So we we've got Emma back. Supposedly this is gonna be the last time we ever see Emma. Um, and have they said if anyone else is coming back? Is Emil uh, coming back? Emily I thought Robin I had seen is supposed to be her. back in episode four. Okay. That could be. And I know I heard a rumor that supposedly Gina and Snow, I think, or possibly Charming, might come back. I'm not a hundred percent sure though. Yeah. Oh, I hadn't heard that. I, I did I did hear that Rebecca was Vader days. was going to come back. Yeah, yeah, Rebecca I knew. And then yeah. I know Emily and Robin were getting for at least one episode. Okay. I, yeah, I want to say it was episode four. That could be. Because I'm really interested to see how they're going to tie that storyline up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, Very but they 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 wrapped up Hook and Emma, and I am I am satisfied. I'm yeah, I'm sure yeah. some I haven't really looked at Tumblr, and I don't really care to. I'm sure some fans are going to be all upset, like it isn't the right Hook. But you know, like I don't care. You 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 gave Emma and Hook their happy ending, and you you're letting you're you're letting Hook a different Hook be in the story. Yeah, yeah. Hook Hook original is happy and safe in Storybrooke. Yep. So if something happens to this other hook, we're all good. Yes. <laughs> yes. <Yep. laughs> Look at it that way, people. Yeah. Yep. So I'm I'm good, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing. I just I just kind of feel like I I like that this is a brand new a brand new thing. It's a clean slate, and we're gonna do new things with new characters, and with some old ones. But mm-hmm. you know. It's just, it's like they said, it's a new chapter, it's a new book, and I'm, I'm fine with that. Mm-hmm. And I love that, that Henry's an author. 
yeah in in this in this story in this realm uh, and he's and struggling I, to work on that next on that mm-hmm. sequel mm-hmm. and i love the callback to when they were at the ballet when oh. he pulls out his pocket and the first thing he pulls out is the keychain <laughs> yes with this one yeah. it was like oh cool <laughs> I know. I love that he has the, the swan keychain. I don't know how he got it. Yeah. I kind of don't care. I'm, I'm sure they'll tell us mm-hmm. like why it's there and why he has it. But I I like it. And there's there's just enough little touches that say, yeah, this is still the same show, but we're doing something different. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, all things all things considering, if it had to come back, it's yeah, a, it's it's decent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll take yeah. it. I don't. I don't know if it'll go beyond this this season. Yeah. If they do well, sh- maybe. But yeah. I mean, it, I'm it, good it, either way. At this point, yeah. I'm not. I mean, the characters that are left that we know, um, which at this point, it's really just Regina and and Rumple, because mm-hmm. I mean, the hook is a different hook. So he's got a slight, you know, he's got a slightly different personality because this hook's got a different backstory. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's, no, there's no Emma for him to, to play off of. Um, so, and then Henry is all grown up. So it's still Henry, but it's a different Henry. It's not the Henry that we're used to. So, and then everyone else is, is new. I mean, mm-hmm. even, you know, we've got Cinderella before, but this is a different version of Cinderella. And we're going to get some new characters. We're getting a Tiana in this upcoming episode, which should be fun. Um, yeah. you know, we'll, well, you know, uh, you know, Zelina's going to come back at some point, which will be nice. Um, but, I mean, at this point, the characters that are left, it's like, you know, if they can find a way for them to, you know, tie up their loose ends that are left and, you know, do this the, do this one season and say, okay, we tried something different and be done with it, that I, uh, I yeah. at this point... I would not be upset if it gets no. canceled after this season. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, seven years, that's a good run for a show this day. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. six yeah. years was a good run, or too. Six, and six, yeah. yeah. And especially this, where it's it's a fantasy. Mm-hmm. For a show to, to run for that many seasons, to, and for this type of show, you know, you... You see things like Law and Order, which has been on for five bazillion years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they do do things like that, or you know these these. Well, you know, crime crime dramas. There's no shortage of ways yeah. that people can commit murders. Yes, yeah. sadly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they can make stuff up, but yeah, fantasy that those kind of tend to. I mean, Once Upon a Time was getting stale there at the mm-hmm. at the end, and it we were kind of like, yeah, this is going to get canceled, and then it didn't. Yeah. But, but they're kind of they're kind of they're putting they're putting a fresh coat of paint on it, and yeah. it's kind of nice. I mean, the the guy they have playing adult Henry, I I can like, yeah, I I can see it. I can see yep. you. You 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 are you're grown up Henry. Mm-hmm. And you you act. I mean, you would act. He acts like the the way that you would expect Henry as an adult to act, mm-hmm. and kind of that kind of thing. Yeah. Even during, even you know, whether when they do the flashbacks to the fairy tale land, and he's running around in the in the doublet, and mm-hmm. and after after Cinderella, it's like, yeah, you're still that same that same yeah. cute little kid, just <laughs> and, and, and trying to, and teaching her how to use the motorcycle. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, this is gonna end well. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Although I, I'm sure I'm sure that motorcycle runs on magic by now. I just need yeah. them to mention it mm-hmm. just for my my peace of mind. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> same with his same with his with his cell phone. Yeah. Unless in one of those realms he happened to pop into a pop in and bump into a certain gentleman with the blue box and some jiggery pokery was done. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. That would that would work too. Yeah. <laughs> the doctor um, could um, definitely we'll be in this realm. Uh, and the and both we'll bike and the phone. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh I'm trying to think what else. It's just it's one of, uh, I, it's just it's one of those things that's like you know we were all kind of you know we at least us 
I can't speak for all of our listeners and all the other fans too, but at least I know with us, like we were all just kind of okay with Once Upon a Time ending last season. And then when mm-hmm. they were like, no, it's coming mm-hmm. back. And we were all just kind of, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's like, you know, we're, we're okay, I guess, happy with where it's going with this new season but at the same time I don't think any of us are overly excited like we normally would be well I'll, I'll say this because I have to see is, is wonderful mm-hmm. and I, I despise the stepmother but I'm supposed to oh sorry buddy um, he doesn't like her either I haven't yeah, I haven't really gotten on board with Jacinda yet um, I like her better as her Cinderella version mm-hmm. but she's fine I, my 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 fear is that we'll watch this and be like, oh my gosh, and it'll get to the point where like, oh my gosh, this is so good, I don't want it to end, and then it'll ah, get canceled. Ah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. So far, it's been it's been fun. Yeah. So as long as it stays fun and ah. interesting and good, and and you know. I'll, I'll keep watching. I mean, there are plenty of things that I could be doing, which, and one is right here crying, and you can probably hear him. Yeah. That, you know, I, I, my, my time is kind of, is kind of precious right now. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know, if you're, if you're, uh, you know, if, 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 if Tiny needs a meal, and you're, you're stuck sitting in one place, and it happens well, to be in front well, of the yes. TV, you know. <laughs> well, that is true. Mm-hmm. There you go, but yeah. Although it, we've been, there's a, a lot of things we've been watching. Yeah, it's 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 weird. It's like we, you know, we've been talking once upon a time, yeah, you know, since the podcast started, and we've been very, we've I think we've been way more enthusiastic, whether it's positive or negative. We've been very, oh, yeah. we've had very strong mm-hmm. opinions, and now at this point, it's like we've got at this point in the fandom with the way things have gone, it's we're all just kind of, eh. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're cautiously it's, it's optimistic. A, yeah, I mean it's not a bad. Eh. It's it's sort yeah. of a let's just let's see how things go. But I will not be crushed if it goes if it goes away forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We still have those old DVDs and Netflix. Oh yeah. yes, oh yes. Yeah. And that three hour long episode. Yes, yes, that, yes, that one too. Yes. Like here's here's three seasons in three hours. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cause, uh, yes. Cause that's what we're trying to explain to Rachel why she. <laughs> it's like oh wait a minute. And this thing happened. And this thing happened. And you got to know about this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then that. To be fair, that was early on in the podcast. We had mm-hmm. no idea what we were doing. No. Mm-hmm. Yep. We were uh, so excited. Yeah. Excited and naive. <laughs> mm-hmm. We learned. We got better, yeah. and we will continue to get better. Yeah. So. But uh, yeah. So that's where, at this point, that's where we kind of are with the uh, once upon a time. It's like, yay! It's it's back. We're happy with it. But if it goes away, we'll be fine. We'll be okay. Mm-hmm. Although I I do have to say I love how when Emma was explaining, you know, how everybody got their happy endings. You know, Archie's Archie's business as a therapist was was not doing so well, but his business as a wedding officiator is is booming. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of those. So like, yep that that's that's how that's how they explained how everybody got their happy endings. Yeah, that mm-hmm. was, that was one of those lines though I missed because uh, my my TV signal kept cutting out on me and Emma's explaining. Oh, no, she said, she said mm. something about Granny too, and I missed it. Oh, uh, that was that was my favorite. Okay. I had a lot of favorite parts of that episode, but that was one of them. I was just <laughs> like, that is just so wonderful. Nah. What, so what is Granny grandma doing? Grandpa what, still I grandma and grandpa. <laughs> yep. I, 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 miss, I missed it. So what is Granny doing? I can't remember what Granny's doing. I was too fixated on the Archie line. Okay. <laughs> I think it was something about her lasagna or something. Oh, okay. I can't I'd remember. To, I'm sorry. I'd have to go the, back and rewatch the episode or, or yeah. find a clip of it. Yeah. yeah. It was. It was. It was good. But yeah, for whatever reason, my TV signal was just kept cutting out, and of course, it was cutting out while the show was on, but not during the commercials. I got oh, all the, yeah, I got that, all the commercials, that is how it goes. but not the TV show that I'm trying to watch. <laughs> they, they've got it. They got to shove some annoying 
ad in your face, but don't care about what you're actually trying to watch. Jeez. Nope. Yeah, that was kind of annoying, so. I would be annoyed, too. Yeah. So I may need to rewatch, go back and try and find episode two and get all the bits that I missed. <laughs> so that's probably why I was confused, just because stuff kept cutting out. So, I'll, the one, the that's, one thing, the, my, not helpful. yeah, my one comment though, and I know Brittany and uh, Holly were in agreement, agreement was, is I am loving that they are letting Robert use his natural accent. Yes. <laughs> I first heard him talk. I'm like, oh yeah, that's how he sounds normally. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So maybe he is a different version of Rumpel or something. Yeah. yeah. And just too, because I've seen him play a couple other roles, and when he gets angry, when he gets that, just that certain tone in his with his accent, it's like, okay, yep, don't try the knee farther. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. just just be careful. <laughs> exactly. Don't <sighs> anger the. Uh, don't anger the man. <laughs> And I guess I guess it's yet to be seen if if this story has an actual dark one or if he's yeah shaking that off or whatever I don't know that or one? yeah that would be or nice unless this would be a different version where the street where his ties weren't cut yeah that could be I mean we're 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 talking about what ifs and mm -hmm. and other storylines. So really, the only the only two original characters would be Regina and Henry, and right. Henry's played by somebody else, so it's really Regina. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, we don't know yet. We haven't gotten Rumpel's, mm -hmm. Weaver's story yet, so it's going to be interesting to yep. see. Yep. Uh, anything Heck, else? We don't even know about Neil. Yeah. <laughs> Or he could be gone, but you never know. It's just, yeah, way things. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, because I mean, we got a little bit of backstory in this last episode where, uh, you know, the the not Emma's hook, you know, they they convinced him to go with Henry, and then mm -hmm. had, they convinced Regina to go with him. Um, yep, but we don't know where Rumpel falls into all of that yet. So yeah, exactly. It's like, how did he get in this other realm, and is this somebody different, or is this yeah. the same one? And I don't know. Nope. Yeah. Could he? Could he? Because you know, the, he he and Bell were trying to get things back back yeah. on track at the end of the last season, and so maybe I don't. Maybe, maybe what we his shadow back. I don't think so. Hmm. Is it, are you thinking he might be the shadow? Possibly. Two different theories. I mean, I ties like that Silver one. or Shadow Rumpel. Huh. Oh, man, I might have to rewatch season three to find out what <laughs> theory actually might stick. That could be. I mean, I, I'm sure they were, you know grasping at any detail that could help them craft this this next season because they were not thinking they were coming back yeah. mm -hmm. so I, I mean like i said the the, the anything the could happen mirror <laughs> yeah the mirror universe hook that we have now i mean he was a joke he was just he was just mm -hmm. a throwaway comic relief funny, yeah it was comic a comic relief yeah. in that one episode mm -hmm. yeah the, the that version of Hook, I think, was really just their chance to give Colin something different to do. <laughs> yeah, because that, that story, that episode, you know, the, those couple episodes, they really had nothing for it for his character in them because in the story, Emma never became the savior, so she never would have met him. Mm -hmm. So it's like there was, uh, yeah, yeah, there was, there was no reason for him to be around. It's like, well, let's just throw him in the. In in the pub and he's drunk. He's this old fat drunk guy that's, you know, whatever. And obviously he had a, he had a good time with it. And now and and it's like in this season it's like now let's make him let's give him some humanity and make mm -hmm. you like him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like good job. I I I, I approve. Mm -hmm. 
I guess we'll find yeah. out. We're probably making things up just about as fast as the writers are, actually. <laughs> yeah, they're like, okay, we'll, we'll, you know, stay just barely ahead of everybody. Yeah. What can we? What else can we do? Go back in the archives and what? What did we? What did we mention? What can we grab onto that will yeah. actually work? Dear Once Upon a Time writers, if you need help, email us at. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. We will mm-hmm. gladly brainstorm we'll, we'll consult. With you. Yes, we'll happily consult. <laughs> yeah. Help you as long as I get a writing credit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We we will take <laughs> or we, something. We will take compensation in writing credits and Skype uh, calls with Colin and, and Lana. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh man. My. <laughs> My my end of that conversation would be something like how many yamana Bud. What's one of those? Start start speaking in tongues. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, is there anything else that we want to pick um, over on this, or we're we gonna wait can't... till the uh, mid season break, probably? Yeah, or whatever. Will they, they have? Be, will they be a mid season break? break? Do we know? Yeah. yeah. Is anyone still getting used to? It? Being on Fridays, I am a little bit because I kind of had to remind myself. What's oh, that's right. Yeah. We've already seen that. It's Friday. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like I'm yeah. just like, like coming home Sundays, relaxing a little bit. Oh, once upon a time. Oh wait, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although, because I watch it on Hulu and it's on the day after, mm-hmm. and and you know, a few weeks ago they put on they put episodes of all the old TGIF like oh, sitcoms. Sure. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so I've been, you know, while I've, while I've been home with Alex, I've been sitting down and watching those. So we've been binge watching Perfect Strangers and Boy Meets World and, and all that stuff. And that's been fun. But like, it was like one, one Saturday I sat down to we like, what should we watch? And I was like, oh, right. Once Upon a Time's on Friday now. So I watched the new episode and I'm like, okay, this is good. <laughs> it, it does take a little, this is, a little this getting is acceptable. used to, but, uh. As I said before, I don't really do much on Friday nights anyway, so mm-hmm. it's other than I I miss the begin the first like ten minutes of this last episode because I'd been at the grocery store and we just didn't get home as fast as I would yeah. have liked. But other than that, it's it's been fine just sitting on the couch on Friday nights, just vegging and watching the. The TV yeah. and, and all that. So yeah, the only time I is I will walk weekends, but so far it hasn't been an issue. So yeah. yay, yay! <laughs> yeah, so, anyway, I guess it's, it's an adjustment for sure. But mm-hmm. although, and yeah, it, from, it, 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 oh, go ahead. And from what I've been able to see, the ratings have been pretty much. Maybe like one tenth or two tenths difference from their from Sunday to uh, the Friday move. Hmm. I wonder if that I wonder if that improved on the Sun or the the Friday numbers at all. From, there, from, like like whatever they had on Friday last season. If I'm not sure. Yeah, I wasn't. I'm not sure because they took Shark Tank's play, so I'm not sure how Shark Tank is doing in Once Upon a Times. Huh. Time slot on Sunday that I haven't investigated. Yeah, because I'm like, I wonder if that was why they. Well, I don't know. Who knows why networks do anything? Mm-hmm. First, I just watch everything online anyway, so. Mm-hmm. <sighs> what else? I guess that's all I can think of. Mm-hmm. Yep. But. If you, dear listeners, think of anything, or if you just want to uh, send us in feedback, you should email us. Our email address is fiveishfangirls at gmail.com. You can also go to our website and visit us on all the social media that's linked there. Our, our website's thefiveishfangirls.com. You can also visit us our, at our Patreon page. You can support us through our uh, Amazon store, or you can leave us reviews on iTunes and Google Play. We're also on Stitcher Radio, and we have a YouTube channel. So, you know, just all the, on all the usual social media things, you can catch us and 
we'll uh, we'll be happy to hear from you. Mm-hmm. Facebook's kind of our biggest one, and Instagram. And don't forget about the thirty one days of Halloween. I've kind of been sporadic on that. Yep. Mostly, it's like if I have one off the top of my head, I, I'll throw it up on the thing. But so if you if if you want to join us in on join in with us on that, that's on our website as well. The, the list. So every day there's a little thing and it's just sort of a halloween tradition we have for going back a couple of years now is photo mm-hmm. challenges yeah um, with dr who and halloween so mm-hmm. anyway yep that's all i've got other than a cough yeah <laughs> i've been trying trying to hit the cough button as much as possible <laughs> and, it's all good and alex Alex finally fell asleep. Oh, <laughs> just in time for us to finish. Good job, buddy. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> like you've been fussing through the whole thing, yeah. and now you're done. Yeah. Okay. The conversation is done. He has nothing more to add. That's mm-hmm. what. It is. I guess so. I guess he really was trying to to add his two cents. I just didn't know how to interpret it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sorry, buddy. Um, if you and you're older, we'll figure this out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In a few years, he can tell us what he thinks about uh, Once Upon a Time. <laughs> yeah, kid, we're going to watch this show, and you're going to like it. And yeah. You're going to tell random strangers on the internet what you think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Irish fan goes the next, next gen, kind of. Yes. 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 Next generation of podcasters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All righty. Well, I think with that, we shall sign off for this week. This is Brittany in Bethlehem saying goodnight. This is Chrissy saying goodnight from Salt Lake City. This is Sally from Wisconsin saying good evening. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. I, what my biggest complaint is I, every time I watch, I want fried chicken. <laughs> She works at the chicken joint. Every time I see her at work, I'm like, I want some chicken. You should right. order KFC and on I, Friday night. I, that chicken place was the one that they went through with the Queens of Evil. I'm been listening to the five-ish fangirls podcast any and all movies books games and other forms of media mentioned are owned and operated by the respective copyright holders no copyright infringement is intended or implied